Well, hello everyone. Even though it is currently 100 degrees where I'm sitting, we are gonna talk about fall. So I have put some fall makeup on. I'm wearing a fall color. This is about as good as I can do in this heat. And no, I am not crazy. I am aware it's July and I am aware it is ridiculously hot out for most of my viewing audience. But now is the time to start thinking about fall trends because like we've seen, the Nordstrom anniversary sales already featuring all the fall things. And as we move into August, you're gonna see the retailers clear out all their summer inventory and bring in all the fall stuff. So I thought I would get ahead of the trends, see where I'm going there, and give you a heads up on what I'm currently loving as forecasted for the fall 2023 season and some trends I will more than likely be staying away from in the next few months. Now this goes without saying, but sadly, I have to say it, I am not suggesting that you wipe out your current wardrobe and just buy anything that trend forecasters, other influencers, even something that I recommend. This is meant to be a little tongue in cheek. We're having a little fun. How seriously can you take fashion anyway? You can't. Whether you follow the trends or not, it's nice to know what's current, what's of the moment. And if it's something you happen to like and you wanna incorporate into your closet, great. If not, we're just gonna have fun right here in this video. So let's end on a high note and start with the stuff I'm not into. So the first of the trends I am going to be skipping, there's actually two that I'm combining here as forecasted by Elle, Vogue, and a couple of other magazines so I don't take all that seriously, but there's this whole free the nipple thing along with, I feel like every season they're pushing this, the sheer clothing look. Now I'm wondering if the sheer clothing look is just because they keep pushing it every season and nobody's buying it, so they're just sending that stuff back out. If it's sheer clothing that they're pushing for winter and fall and summer, it's the same piece of clothing. I don't know. Anyway, I will not be freeing any nipples. I will not be gravitating towards any sheer clothing. I don't even wear sheer clothing to bed at night. So you will not see me highlighting that here. Now there are some more wearable ways to do this. Crochet is something we've seen popping up towards the end of the summer and I'm sure it will be here in a much larger way as the temperatures drop. More of an open weave crochet over a tank or something might be the only way I'm embracing this sheer clothing trend and that's it. So I just wanted to put that out there. For whatever reason, the designers are still hung up on showing our stuff to the world. I'm not, that will not be me. The second trend I will definitely be passing on is this whole thing around statement coats, extra puffy coats. Some people call it the duvet cover look and the fluffy furry coat. Unless it's a faux fur coat, that legitimately looks like a real fur coat. This is not a trend I'm getting into. I'm talking about this stuff that looks like you took your grandfather's bathrobe and made it bigger and puffier and threw it on over your regular clothing. I don't understand this. I don't know who is into this. I don't even think this is because I live in a climate that's not particularly cold. This just to me, no. It's a no. So I don't think I need to expand too much on that. I just don't find it particularly flattering and I feel like there are better ways to spend your money and we'll talk about that after I address a few more trends. Furry footwear is back. This kind of kicked off with the whole Gucci loafer slide thing that has the fur lining. People went crazy for it. I have friends that love it. I just think it looks dirty. It looks dirty. I don't want anything of that material that close to the ground or exposed to the open air. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I get new slippers every year because even just walking around my own house, the, sh the shearling or even faux shearling lined slippers get matted down and kind of gross. Your feet sweat. I mean, that's normal feet sweat, but just do we want to see that? I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't understand it. I, I feel like they're probably really comfortable. I understand that. I just don't want to see it. So I'm okay if it's fur lined inside a shoe that is not visible, but once you put it into a mule or some sort of slide, it's a phrase I'm gonna say a lot today, it's a no for me. Just like florals for spring, the whole kind of goth, dark romance look is not exactly groundbreaking, but it does get recycled every so often and it seems like it's coming back and it's combining a couple of elements. They're calling it dark romance dark florals, a little bit more goth, and on top of that, a lot of leather. And I don't mean leather moto jackets or leather trenches or leather blazers. You are gonna see that. I'm talking head to toe leather sets. And it's, I'm sorry, I'm envisioning some things that are not, that would get me banned from YouTube. Aside from the fact, like I've mentioned, I live in San Antonio, Texas, and when I think of head to toe leather, I just think of sweating, or I think of a rodeo cowboy with chaps on. I just, it's not a practical look for me, even if it's faux leather, that's just 
because it's too much leather. It also brings to mind something very inappropriate and if there are children in the room, I'm not gonna really go there, but it's, it's a definite fetish that is just not particularly appealing to me. I'm not judging you if that's your thing. It's not my thing. So I wouldn't wear it in my bedroom and I'm certainly not gonna be wearing it out in the public eye. I'm trying not to laugh. Now, I don't mind taking a trend and making it something wearable for me. So while I will not be walking around in head to toe leather, I love a pair of faux leather leggings. Spanx are my absolute favorite. Walmart had a black and brown pair that sells out every season. I saw they brought them back again already. So I don't mind that. I don't mind um, a leather blazer or a faux leather blazer. I saw a ton of those in the Nordstrom anniversary sale. I did not pick one up, but I think that's a fun way to take a very bizarre trend and make it something wearable if it works with your wardrobe. I love faux leather joggers. My favorite are the ones from Spanx. Walmart usually comes out with one and from one of their lines. Last year, it was the Sonia line. We'll see who decides to attack it this year. Speaking of Walmart, this is just an aside I thought you would find interesting if you didn't already know it. So a lot of you have noticed that Walmart is a lot more fashion forward than they used to be, and that is for a very good reason. So there are two lines in particular at Walmart, Scoop and Free Assembly, and their, their creative director, their head designer is Brandon Maxwell, and he is a legitimate couture designer. He has runway shows at all the big, you know, Paris and New York and all that every season. And so you'll see trickle down from his ideas on the high end side, stuff that's sold at Neiman Marcus and Saks and, you know, for thousands of dollars, you'll see, and Nordstrom carries some too. You'll see that trickle down to influencing some of the designs you'll see at Walmart. This isn't sponsored by Walmart, but it is kind of fun to see how it's twisted around and turned into something more affordable and more wearable at the Walmart price point. Back to head to toe leather or any kind of goth look, it's, an, it's again, a no for me. And the last of the trends that I'm gonna talk about today that I will not be wearing isn't so much that I don't like it, I just don't see how it works for me in my everyday life, and that is something I wanna point out here. Whether it's a trend I like or don't like, when you're thinking about yourself, the key factor is, will this work in your everyday life? If it's something you love, but you realize this will look ridiculous in my day to day, it's not gonna work for you. Just something to think about. Okay, so the last one, number five of the trends I will be skipping is metallics. Now I love shiny things, sparkly things. I was probably a magpie in a past life, but metallics, again, another emphasis on head to toe stuff, sets are big. I've shown you a bunch of sets throughout the year, whether it's loungewear sets or cute little short sets, sets are gonna continue to be a thing, I think through the rest of 2023 and probably beyond. Metallic head to toe. And I love that look, but I love it for an evening night out, specifically around holiday time, New Year's, a fancy occasion. Going to my grocery store in head to toe or even one piece of metallic clothing, for me, that's gonna be hard to pull off and gonna be a no for me. But are there ways to incorporate those metallic pieces into your closet? Yes, maybe just reserve it for an evening out, a date night, or buy it when you see it and then pull it out in December around holiday party time. So I like to end things on a positive. So we're gonna now talk about the trends I actually am really excited about. And for the first time in years, there's an overreaching theme, which I am incredibly excited about. And I think all of you should be as well. And that is wearability. Shocker! The designers are finally realizing that while couture is fun to look at, it is not exactly something that translates into most people's everyday life. I think from what I've read is even though the pandemic has been over for a while, depending on where you live, businesses have been slow to embrace going back into the office. So I think when people were starting to start to phase into the office, people were so excited to get dressed up again that they either went to the extreme of overly dressing up or they were really embracing and holding on to that loungewear, dare I say, pajamas work from home look. Well, now that people are legitimately, many of them, expected to go back into the workplace and a normal work schedule, the crazy high-end, very dressed up look is not exactly feasible and there's no way you can wear your pajamas to work. It's unlikely anyway. So wearability is a really nice trend to see, but I wanna break it down into some more specific trends. The first is color. So there are gonna be a few colors that you see that are gonna be really emphasized in all kinds of things in fall 2023, but the one I'm most excited about is red. I personally love those brighter colors, reds, blues, 
I mean, I like lots of colors. I like more muted tones as well, but I love red. I wish this was a trend that had been around last year when I was still looking for red outfits to wear to Ole Miss football games, be that as it may. Red is a really easy color to incorporate and a lot of people can wear it, even redheads. And whether you are wearing it head to toe in a cute little set or it's just a pair of earrings that have some red accents or just a red top or just a splash of red on your handbag, it's a really easy way to incorporate that trend without going absolutely crazy. Something basic is just a red tank top if you live in the South where it's gonna be 100 degrees for a while, even into the fall, or a red sweater. It doesn't have to be anything groundbreaking. It's just a nice color to see brought in. Now the trend I saw mentioned over and over and over across all the fashion websites was this whole return to elevated basics. Some were calling it the quiet luxury look. However you want to call it, I'm going to stick with elevated basics. I don't think anybody is upset with this trend. So specifically the looks that I saw all over the runways earlier in the in March when they were doing fashion week for fall and again coming up in a lot of the fall preview magazines, things like jeans, a huge emphasis on wearable jeans in normal silhouettes. So skinny is, is not coming back. It's, I mean, it still exists. There's plenty of retailers that are selling, like every retailer is still selling skinny jeans. If that's your thing, go for it, keep buying them. But the straight leg or an even more wearable option that seems to be very popular is the slim straight leg. There's a barrel leg, which again is a, I feel like a more wearable version of the straight leg. Wide leg is back, but not so it's like dragging on the ground. It's wearable wearable flares, wearable silhouettes in jeans. So I'm very, very happy to see that. And just a normal medium wash seems to be the trend. Is that a trend? I mean, that's just a classic look. Now they're calling it a trend. Fine, we'll go there. Another thing I'm seeing over and over and over is a basic trench coat worn as an accessory, worn as a jacket, worn in different lengths, nothing crazy, similar, kind of vibe for when it gets a little bit colder is a pea coat in a camel color is the preference, a camel sort of winter fall coat. That's what I love. I'm seeing a lot of that. What's nice is you don't have to fill your closet with it. You need one trench coat and you should have a trench coat. We've gone a little far into this conversation, but I will have examples of the stuff I am excited for and I think are good buys for you. I'm gonna list them under each trend. So I have a great trench coat hanging in my closet from Amazon, from their drop line. Love it. A link to the pea coat that I love. Old Navy generally comes out with one every fall, winter. Nordstrom has a line called Thread and Supply. It's usually even cheaper than Old Navy. They're not released yet. Like I said, it's July, but keep watching my channel in future weeks and months. I'll let you know when those things come up. I have jeans recommendations from Cut From The Cloth. They're generally under $100. Maurice's is a newer favorite of mine. Very affordable, always around $50 or less, usually in the $30 range. Scoop and Free Assembly are two great denim lines. And uh, I said Sonia, I meant Sophia jeans over at Walmart. I referenced her as Sonia earlier. Meant Sophia, the heat is getting to me. Anyway, it doesn't matter how much you wanna spend on a pair of jeans, there is a price point for everybody. So I'm really excited about that. Another elevated basic that is all over the fashion internet world, white button down shirts or button up, whatever you wanna call them, it doesn't matter. But white blouses, basic white tops, a white tank under a trench with jeans is a big look. Another kind of trend, I hate calling these, this, what people are calling trends just cracks me up, but sticking with this elevated basics or elevated staples, a big look that they were showing, I'm laughing because I'm like, this is just what I wear, okay. Black leggings, white tank top, gray hoodie, and then a trench coat over that. Oh, okay. I didn't know that I was just being I was being fashionable. I just thought I was being comfortable, but I will take it. The gray hoodie sweater look, you know, you can find a cashmere version if you want to get, you know, really kind of elegant and fancy. You could just grab a zip up one from Old Navy or Walmart, but I love it. It's very attainable, very wearable look. While we're still on this, I wanna just hop back on to the white button up or button down shirt. One retailer that I feel is so severely overlooked on this is Chico's. So if you are looking for elevated basics, especially if you work in a more conservative workplace, their pants, we're gonna talk about that in the next trend, their pants, their button down shirts, especially the no iron, no stain white ones, they have a variety of styles, but they are amazing and they are always having sales and the quality is 
unbelievable and they last for years and years and years. So Chico's is actually a great place all the time to look for elevated staples or elevated basics. I'm sure they had no idea going into fall 2023 that they would be considered trendy, but there you go. And on that, we're gonna move into the third trend I'm excited about, which is more tailored pieces, going back to the office look. So we're kind of expanding on the elevated staples or elevated basics. So tailored, more corporate look, you're gonna see a lot more suits, suiting, suit sets, blazers, but not the big oversized boyfriend blazers. We're gonna see more of a tailored look. Of course, you can always go for oversized by just buying one size bigger than you actually are or more, so that works. This ties back into companies are insisting that their employees actually go to the office finally. So that goes hand in hand. Another coat you're gonna see that is a trend I like is a long black wool coat. It's a great investment piece that while it might be trendy this year, it's not trendy. You're gonna reach for it all the time. I think if you have room in your closet and your budget for two fall winter coats, a long camel coat and a long black coat, of some sort of wool or wool blend or wool cashmere blend will be pieces that you can have in your closet pretty much forever. So I'm really excited to see that trend come in. For those of us who aren't going into an office and don't need to dress up, just take the tailored suit part, the blazer, and throw that over a nice basic t-shirt or tank, pair it with your jeans, and you're kind of crossing over a few trends. And honestly, it's not a trend in my world. It's just how we've been dressing for years. It's nice to see that the fashion designers are catching up with the trendsetters that are suburban moms. And the last trend that I am super excited about because selfishly, this is my figure. The figure they're trying to emphasize, the silhouette is the hourglass figure. And to me, when I think curvy girl, I'm thinking these kind of curves, right? The hourglass figure. I don't know if that coincides with the fact that the Barbie movie is coming out this weekend, but I mean, she is like the ultimate hourglass figure. It is 100% unattainable, so that's not what I'm trying to look like. But I am really excited that fashion designers are acknowledging that women are not built, all of us, straight up and down, that many of us, dare I say most of us, have some curves to us. So one of the things I saw and actually bought in the Nordstrom anniversary sale was this denim blazer that the name of it was the Hourglass Blazer, and it was cut so that it flares out a little bit at the hips and gives you an hourglass shape, even if you don't have one. You're also gonna see a comeback for the peplum tops, which I never thought went out of style. So for all of you who gave me grief about my peplum sweater that I wore last fall, ha, I was just ahead of the trend. It is back, it is still in my closet. You're also gonna see a different kind of skirt silhouette, a lot more feminine. I'm so excited about this one. Sort of that bell shape, think, almost like a crinoline skirt, but not quite that big. So 50s, sort of early 60s shape. I think it's a really flattering feminine shape and I'm very excited to see this embrace of femininity in, in that way of acknowledging a woman's real shape. So for me, that is very exciting. Also because selfishly, I, I am built bigger on the top. My, I do have a waist and then I go back out again in the hips and the butt. So yay for clothes that are designed finally to fit me. Now, for those of you that don't have an hourglass figure, that doesn't mean you should skip this trend. You can cheat it by getting tops that either have shoulder pads or some sort of ruffling or embellishments on the top that expands your shoulders, makes your waist look smaller. And then if you have a fuller skirt or a peplum top that kind of adds to the hips a little bit, if you're built straight up and down, it's a really easy way to cheat the eye and make it look like you have an hourglass figure. Or you could go for just a belt at the waist on a dress or a longer top or just in your jeans and tuck your shirt in all the way. Again, it'll make your waist look a little bit thinner. There are very wearable ways to wear this trend because remember the overarching theme for fall 2023 is wearability and I am very excited about that. So that's what I'm excited about and not so excited about for the fall fashion trends of 2023. Like I said, all my suggestions, things that you can buy now or retailers you should be looking for, I will have listed down in the description box and pinned to the top of the comment box. Let me know what you're thinking about these trends. I know a lot of you are not into the trends. Like I said, I don't follow them exactly myself, but it is fun to have a discussion and just have a little lighthearted conversation here. So let's get that conversation started down in the comments. I look forward to reading them and chatting with you there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.